Well, uh, I'm glad you woke me up to see another day. Uh, when Seth called me, I was like, oh, for y'all, my name is Dicky Lee. I, I live over in Dogwood, the Bowes area, and I'm so glad to see my daddy sitting in the church today. Mm -hmm. Took him a while to find it, but he got it. I'm glad he made it there. But, uh, yeah, Seth called me and was like, I'm on my way to, uh, I think it was, uh, we have a men's gathering every third Thursday of the month at church. And uh, Seth called me and he's like, Dickie, so you'd be interested in preaching our church one Sunday. I said, what? You know, and he said, you know, he said again. I was like, well, Seth, I said, I ain't no ordained preacher. I said, but I'd love to come share what the Lord's done to me. You know what I mean? He said, that's all we want, Dickie, you know. But, uh, me and my, my brother Brian right there, we go out to Lifeline uh, twice a week. And uh, these boys have been uh, memorizing <coughs> some scripture for him. I wanted them all to do it. <laughs> but I'm going to call them Lance back there. Come on up here, Lance. This is for you, Brian. Look at you, Lance. Where am I supposed to? This word, I, I can hear you. All right, man. Um, my name's Lance. I'm the Lifeline Ministries, man. Like you said, Dickie and Brian do a lot out there. Um, they believe in us and, and they support us. And we're here. We believe in them and we support them. Um, Psalms 23, make it means a lot to my buddy right here. And it's got to mean a lot to me as I've been reading over it and over it. And uh, I don't know what your Bible translation is, but I think mine's something like, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the face of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. And surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. As I dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. I know y'all remembered it too, didn't you? <laughs> but yeah, it's a real joy to get to go out there. It's a blessing to be a blessing. You know what I mean? Uh, but uh, I'm just going to say a little prayer before I get started. Amen. Y'all don't mind. Uh, Heavenly Father, we just come before you today, Lord. Just humble as we know how. Lord, I just ask you to show up, show out. Leave no doubt that you are the one true King, Lord. I just ask you to just use me for what it is you want to use me for, Lord. Let me get out of the way. Lord, and I thank you for all you're doing in and on through each and every life that's sitting in this room, Lord. And I just, I lift every one of them up to you, especially the ones that lost loved ones this morning, Lord. Lord, I just know, as Paul says, Lord, it's, uh, to live is Christ, but to get to die is gain, you know? And I just, uh, I just want to live for you, Lord. I say, you to use me this morning, I just lift everybody up to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, I was, uh, <coughs> everybody I come across was like, what are you going to preach on Sunday, did you? I was like, well, I really don't know. I'm just going to get there and let the Holy Spirit lead me. You know, I talked to Rick about it last Sunday night, and uh, well, I went to Indiana uh, Wednesday morning, and that town to turned into a fiasco, but I got to see my brother. Uh, and we got together, got to eat dinner, and uh, well, I got home, and then Thursday morning I got up, and I got to read my Bible, and man, I read my Bible from uh, about 9.30 to, wound up being about 6.30 that night. <laughs> I got to take notes, right? Well, on Friday mornings, uh, I go out to Lifeline and our pastor, John Aiken, he goes out there. When he don't, he can't show up, I, I fill in for him. But he got to talking, and man, he started saying the same thing I had wrote down in my notes the night before. And I was like, I got goosebumps all over, you know what I mean? So uh, I got to write stuff down when I forget, you know what I mean? So I'm just going, I'm going to read this to you right here. It says, uh, 
We grow through the study of God's word. We will never grow in grace and in knowledge of God until the Bible becomes a part of our lives every day. In Galatians 2.20, I kind of wish I wanted to get up and say it, but <laughs> say it, Ryan. Get up and say it, Ryan. Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified by Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. 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 That's the deal right there. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I know, uh, I mean, look, it's like Paul says <laughs> in Philippians 3.13, you know, uh, it's not to say that I'm perfect. I ain't even reached it there, but I've gone and pushed toward the high calling of God. You know what I'm saying? But here's the deal. I'm on, this ain't where I'm going, but this is what I'm going to read to you right off the bat. This is John, and I'm, I'm reading out the New Living Testament because it's easier for me to read. But uh, this is John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. It says, I don't speak on my own authority. The Father who sent me has commanded me what to say and how to say it. And I know his commands lead the eternal life, so I say whatever the Father tells me to say. Amen. So, I like to watch Billy Graham a lot. You know his old episodes of his <laughs> crusades. And uh, I love the way he simplifies everything. And this is how I'm going to start out right here. The central message of the Bible is Jesus Christ. In Genesis, Jesus is the seed of the woman. In Exodus, he is the Passover lamb. In Leviticus, he is the atoning sacrifice. In Numbers, he's a spitting rock. In Deuteronomy, the prophet. In John, the captain of the Lord's host. In Judges, the deliverer. In Ruth, the heavenly kinsman, which was Boaz. <coughs> But uh, in the six books of Kings, the promised king, in Nehemiah, the restorer of the nation, in Esther, the advocate, in Job, my redeemer, thank you, Lord. In Psalms, my strength, in Proverbs, my pattern, in Ecclesiastes, my goal, in the Song of Solomon, my satisfier, in the prophets, the coming prince of peace, in the gospels, he is the Christ who came to seek and to save. And ain't you glad he did? Amen. In Acts, he is Christ risen. In the epistles, he is Christ exalted. In Revelation, he is Christ returning <coughs> and reigning. The message of the Bible is the story of salvation through Jesus. And the whole world needs to know <coughs> this story. So whom we can tell today? <clears throat> Now, if you got your Bibles with you, and I hope you do, mm -hmm. turn to 1 John. And this is another thing. I go to celebrate recovery every Friday night. And uh, they give out a little a pamphlet like they do to church. And uh, wait. You got them down through there, and it's 1 John. There's more confirmation that it's. God was telling me that he told me what to write down. You know, that's why I wound up John at first. But it's 1 John chapter 4. And I'm just, I probably just, because it's so good, you know what I mean? I'm just probably going to read those things. It's not that long. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm reading those things. I'll start verse 7. Dear friends, everybody there? Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love does not know God, for God is love. God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we love God, but he loved us and sent up us his sin, his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Dear friends, since God loved us that much, we surely ought to love each other. No one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is 
brought the full expression in us. And as John likes to say, one, two, skip a few. Down to verse 18. Such love has no fear because perfect love expands all fear. If we are afraid, it is for fear of punishment. And this shows that we have not fully experienced his perfect love, like Rick was talking about earlier in the Bible study. Uh, yeah. We love each other because he loved us first. And uh, that's where I'm going to go with Life is all about love because God is love. The most important lesson he wants you to learn on earth is how to love. It is in loving that we are most like him. So love is the foundation of every command he has given us. Learning to love unselfishly is not an easy task. It's counter to our self-centered nature. That's why we are given a lifetime to learn it. God wants his family to be known for its love more than anything else. Jesus said, our love for each other is our greatest witness to the world. <laughs> God wants you to be in regular close fellowship with each other, with each other, believers, so you can develop the skill of loving. Love cannot be learned in isolation. Yeah. You have to be around people, irritating, imperfect, frustrating people. Look at your neighbor and say, you're imperfect and so am I. You're imperfect and so am I. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, often we act as if relationships are something to be squeezed into our schedule. We talk about finding time for our children. Or making time for people in our lives. That gives the impression that relationships are just a part of our lives, along with many other tasks. But God says relationships are what life is about. And, or, you know, we go to Face Center, and this young lady goes there, Christina Payne, she started this outreach program called Matt 25. And if any of y'all know anything about what Matt 25 is, what it, it says in the Bible, you know, I was hungry and he fed me, I needed clothes, he gave me clothes, I was in prison and he came to see me. Well, this is what being a Christian is all about. It's all about, and he, he just wouldn't call to salvation, he was called to service. You gotta get down and tell somebody, you know what I mean? Uh, we all thought it day. We thought it in our heads, Jesus said you done sin, and we're gonna sin to the day we die. Just because you're saved don't mean that you ain't gonna sin, okay? Because it, it happens in your head. You know, we, we think crazy stuff. So you can't keep going to the altar uh, trying to get saved again. You just gotta repent of your sin every day. Or, you know, you gotta talk to God every day constantly. You gotta pray with your eyes wide open, I'm telling you. You know what I'm saying? You hear me? I don't hear me this morning. Get you? fired up. Come on. No, you back there. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, but anyway, Christina, she started this outreach program, and uh, we go out to uh, River City Mission once a month. Somebody gives her testimony. It's all these guys that have been out there at Lifeline, you know, and, you know, what's God, what God's doing in their lives. You know what I mean? Me and, me and Brian, not this past Sunday, but I think two Sundays ago, wasn't it, Brian? We was driving a van, right? Check us out. We pull up out there. There were so many people. Because we went, we went that Thursday before, that Sunday. And they, they really, which we've been several times out there. But they they loved it when they seen that we was the ones that came and picked them up because we'd been out there. You know what I mean? We had a, a relationship with them. Well, there were so many people that got in a van. We had to go and get a. Little end table, a little outside end table, put between the bucket seats. I had to sit in the middle. We pulled up, Kristen, who was like, Oh my God, I'm about to make two trips back, take the back that way, and we ain't breaking the law. <laughs> Me and Brian didn't worry about breaking the law, we worried about getting them to church. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But, uh, yeah, and it's just like Lifeline, man. It's a blessing to be a blessing. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it, it helps keep you. 
in constant contact with God, helping somebody else. You know what I mean? Mm. So, yeah, in Matthew 22, uh, 37, 40, 40, Jesus said, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. This is the first and greatest commandment. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. All the other commandments and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. What's most important to God is displaced by what's urgent. This is where we all get caught up in the rat race, in the world, in uh, debt, in, you know, material things. We get caught up in things that take our eyes off God. You know what I mean? And if we really took, turned around and said, God's enough, okay? God, when you put it and say, God's enough, if you ain't come to the point that you said God's enough, well, nothing ever be enough. Mm -hmm. right. Your mama ain't gonna be enough. Your daddy ain't gonna be enough. Your wife, your girlfriend, them drugs we did wasn't enough. You know what I'm saying? Uh, nothing's never gonna be enough until God's enough. Mm -hmm. right. Right? Right. right? But, uh, hmm. yeah. Bless you, Uh, yeah. Busyness is a great enemy of relationships. We become preoccupied with making a living, <laughs> doing our work, paying bills, and accomplishing goals as if these tasks are the point of life. They're not. The point of life is learning to love God and people. Life minus love equals zero. Mm -hmm. You ain't got no love, you ain't got nothing. Right? right. <coughs> well, I was talking to my, my brother Tyler back there, Tyler Boone, <laughs> Thursday. He said, don't call me out. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Tyler. <laughs> All right, we love the fish. You know, like I said, he loves to pull them out with his hands and his feet. <laughs> Mess me up when I'm over in life. He's like, right your leg up in there, nigga. <laughs> I was like, I'm a leg up. I've had five back surgeries. You know what I'm saying? I put my leg up in there, man. It's fish. Bit the shin of my leg right there, like, yeah. And I, I bang my knee on that bathtub. I don't know how many times. When I come up, Seth was going, <laughs> he said, I heard you screaming under the water. <laughs> I said, I imagine you like the drown part got my leg out of the Yeah, we love the fish. You know. <laughs> uh. <Yeah>. <laughs> <coughs> but I was talking to Tyler. In this case, he was helping one of my buddies out building a bed. He said, no, I never got no time for myself. I'm always helping somebody do something. Right? I told him, I said, Tyler, I said, you know, I said, time is your most precious gift because, you know, uh, it's the only, we, 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 we've only got so much time. You know what I mean? <laughs> If you give somebody your time, you can't get it back. It's uh, it's the highest expression of love you can show. Amen. Is giving your time to somebody. You know what I'm saying? And uh, man, you know, you gotta get out there and let folks you, you love them. You know, when you really get God in your life, I mean that it. You just get out of the way and you got this smile on your face walking around. Everybody's like, boy, you look like you feel better. I'm like, yeah, I do. I really do, you know? And they want to know why. So you tell them. You know what I'm saying? That's what we're supposed to do. That's that's our mission in life. You know what I mean? That's our mission in life. Look, we're only here for a little while. I heard the boy say it like this. Look here. See your fingernail right there? Oh, we live about 70, 80 years, maybe 90 at the most. All right? That's your life right there. Your lifespan. Your fingernail. You can't race the end of eternity. You hear me? We're only here for a little while, and what you do here is what's going to count in eternity. You know what I mean? Uh, come on, come on with it. Yes. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I lost my place. <laughs> I mean, guess I need these. Don't something solid in the trash can. I guess. <clears throat> 
But yeah, the best way to spell love is time. Uh, you were put here on earth to make a contribution. You weren't created just to consume resources, <laughs> to eat, breathe, and to take up space. God designed you to make a difference with your life. You're special. You got this, you see that thumbprint right there? That's the only one in the world. Yes, Look, he knows all the hairs on your head, I'm telling you. He, 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 you are significant to him, okay? He, it's all, it, look, it's your choice. Which way you want to go with it? Look, here's the river. John said it's Friday. He said, here's the river. It's what, it's what Jesus and God has got for you right here. If you get off over here, you know, he said you can get in ankle deep, you can get in knee deep, you can get in there and swim in that puppy. Choice is yours. Mm -hmm. It's all your choice. You know, I used to, I mean, look, I spent some time uh, locked up. Uh, <coughs> I was uh, that prodigal son you were talking about earlier. We all are. You know, we won't realize you're not. Okay. <clears throat> I used to blame God. When I was 16, I had a car wreck. Right over on 131. Right there before you get to where new, uh, uh, Trace Creek Baptist Church did. And uh, my girlfriend got killed, Betty Jo Allen. And her daddy was a preacher over at Trace Creek Church. A little church right there on, not Trace Creek, Hopewell Baptist Church. And, you know how it is. Getting old. Gray hair is popping up. But uh, for a long time, man, I blame God. You know what I'm saying? Why'd you do this to me? Right? Well, then fast forward a little bit. I got out of high school, got married my first wife. We was married almost 10 years. She got killed on a pole over here at Farrington Airport. Well, I was really going another way in, you know what I mean? Wound up in jail. And uh, it wasn't until I got to the book of Job. Really, I read Jonah first. I read Jonah, Jonah, Johnny read Jonah. Y'all need to read Jonah? Mm -hmm. I spent three years locked up straight. He was in the well for three days and nights, and it really hit home with me. And But when I read the book of Job, you know, you read the first part of it, it's like, man, Job really went through it. Well, it wasn't God put me through it. You know, at the beginning, God, the devil was going to and fro looking for somebody he could devour, you know? God said, if you tried my servant Job right here, you know, Job, he got to complaining there toward the end. All his buddies just telling him, oh, you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong. He's like, no, I'm not. I ain't done nothing wrong, basically. And he got to whining to God, you know. And God kind of got mad at him. But there at the end, right about the last chapter, I'm pretty sure, God told Job, he told him to pray for his friends. And when Job finally turned around and prayed for his friends, Amen. and got himself out of the way, all right, God blessed him double what he had. You know what I'm saying? And I realized when I read that story, it really understood. It hit home with me. It wasn't God doing that to me. It wasn't God that took them away from me. You know, we've all got a set amount of time. And what we do with it is up to us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I realized it was the devil trying to pull me away from where God was wanting me to go. You know, I've been running for years. Still want to sometimes, you know what I mean? I still want to be in the world, but I know better. You know, I know better. When I do something wrong, I'm like, I know better, you know what I mean? I turn around on my head, you know what I mean? You know? Uh, but, you know, everything I've been through, from losing them to being locked up to uh, having five back surgeries, uh, prepared me for this moment right here. Amen. Be right here. You know what I mean? Don't get me wrong. I'm not perfect. I never will be perfect until that glorious day I get to see my Lord and Savior. You know what I mean? Uh, Come on. And I can't wait for the day. I'm like, right. I'm ready right now. But look, it's like Paul said. Hey, to live is Christ and to die is gain. That's right. right. That's right. But if I stay here, I produce some more fruit. That's right. <laughs> that's what we're supposed to do, right? That's, that's it. Come on. Come on. You know, a lot of times when I, when I first started going out there, I used to get nervous getting up in front of them guys. You know what I mean? I used to get nervous when I get up in front of sober recovery. You know, I didn't have that feeling when I got up there this morning. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
But I kind of got off base there. But you know, that's what he does, ain't it, Greg? Yeah. Yeah, if we have no love for others, no desire to serve others, and I'm only concerned about my needs, I should question whether Christ is really in my life. A saved heart is one that wants to serve. Hmm. Yeah. We are healed to help others. <laughs> you know, God wants to use your hurts and your hang-ups and all the stuff that's been beating you down in all your life to pull somebody else up. Mm -hmm. You know, I got this book at home. It's an old wartime novel book, you know, back in the 30s. Some of you old folks in here might know what I'm talking about, the wartime novels. It was uh, printed on thin paper, a little paper. But anyway, there's a story in there, and they heard this. <clears throat> this guy was talking about when he was a kid, and the preacher got up there and preached the sermon. But at the end of the sermon, he said, uh, there was this little boy out on the seashore. He was building a castle and a, building a wall around it, built some houses out there, and beyond the castle, you know, in the countryside. And uh, little did he know the tide was coming in. Right? Well, the sun was going down and uh, the tide came in and washed away everything that he built <clears throat> back up against the cliff. Little did he know Big Brother was up there on the cliff watching everything that happened because he'd done been through it all. He'd done lived through it all and seen it all. And he reached down and he pulled him up, you know. It's just like, you know, death's creeping up on us, y'all, like that tidal wave coming in, okay? And just like that little boy, we didn't see it. We, we, we ain't gonna see it coming, it's gonna get us. <coughs> and uh, Jesus is sitting up there on that cliff. He's reaching down with his hand and he's gonna pull you up and we're gonna, we're gonna go hand in hand and walk in through the door to the Father where the light's at. You know what I mean? That really hit home me. That man said he was a young kid when he heard that, and that made an impression on him. You know what I mean? And then it made an impression on me when I heard it. You know, it was so simple. Look, in the Bible it says, Jesus taught him how to pray. He said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay? What's that mean to you? Anybody? On earth as it is in heaven? Let me tell you what it means to me. It means we bring heaven to earth through us. That's right. People are supposed to see Jesus through us. That's bringing heaven to earth. Right here and now. That's what we're supposed to do. We're always supposed to go tell somebody about Jesus. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? <laughs> Come on, brother. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, I understand that John, he gets up for something. He's like, I don't know if y'all get what I'm saying. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I know when, when somebody says something, it's like it just it picks you up that much more. Just, Amen. That's right. You know, Rick knows he's been up here. He started getting jacked up falling out when there were four people coming in. He was like, ooh, I can see it. I see it fire going. You know what I mean? I thought, well, I ain't gonna get to preach today. <laughs> Yeah, we are blessed to be a blessing. How long can I go? No matter, just let it rip. Oh. John asked me. Look, we had a we had a business meeting last night, man, and we went. We got prayer. Uh, we meet for prayer on the first Saturdays of the month, and I really wanted to go because I was coming out here this morning. Well, our meeting got set up for six o'clock. It starts at six o'clock. Well, I got to church about. Five. It was like a five yesterday. John was there. I was like, well, I can't hang out long. I got a business meeting. He's like, well, that's all right. You got to meet John. If y'all ain't met John, John is, he's a ball of fire. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But anyway, uh, I just had to bear at church. And, you know, if you go somewhere, you got to have a preacher for an hour. You know, folks that's around you that's, you know, love God and have a pray for you, man. Because it, it really helps. 
You know, there's power in prayer. Look, whenever you pray, you got to back it up words of faith. Right. If you don't walk around doubting in your mind, oh, it's not going to happen. No. It's like these, these boys right here. They're fixing to go into the next phase out there. Okay? They're going to have a little more freedom. If you put your mind, if you ain't going to be able to do it, you ain't going to be able to do it. You put your mind up here, I got this. Hey, Dick, you can do it. You got to kick out the program out there. That's what you need to put your mind on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm telling you. It's all in your mind. And prayer. Back that prayer up, words of faith. Speak the word only. Get this Bible and read it. And man, it'll come out. Look, your eyes, I love saying this now. I heard this here a while back. Your eyes and your ears are the gates to your heart. And what you put in them is what's going to come out. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm -hmm. Your heart's the soul, y'all. Right? Mm -hmm. What you sow in it is going to spring up and produce fruit. It's going to be good fruit or bad fruit. It's your choice. <laughs> my buddy Phil, my buddy Phil, he drove all the way down here to Memphisville this morning. He, said, he told me, he said, whatever you're going to preach, he said, I'm going to show up. So I called him. I was like, hey, dude, sit down. Well, he called me to go over to Elder Baptist Church. He said, I'll be there. I said, you're going to be here tonight. Uh, be here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brad's going to talk tonight. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. Come but on. We'll be here. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> Brian's a ball of fire, man. I'm just listening to confirmation, folks. Uh, come on, keep, oh, yeah. keep coming. Keep, well, see, everything we were talking about this morning, he was setting it up. Yes, it was. Amen. You know, that's how the Lord works, y'all. Yeah, uh, yeah. Here we go. Once you are saved, God intends to use you for his goals. Your call to salvation includes your call to service. Second time I said that, I think. I remembered it, didn't I? At the end of your life on earth, you will stand before God and He is going to evaluate how well you served others with your life. We are only fully alive when we're helping others. Man, I know that's true. That's like I was talking about. When I go out there, I get all jacked up. Like I used to get jacked up on drugs. You know what I mean? I get all jacked up when I'm there and see y'all. I'm like, Lance got up here, man. And he, he recited Psalm 23. Amen. You know what I mean? I think that's, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. You know? It's great to see God work in somebody else's life. You know what I mean? That's right. Man. Yeah. <coughs> God wants to use you. <coughs> I do that sometimes. <laughs> God wants you to learn to love and serve others unselfishly. God wants to use you to make a difference in this world. He wants to work through you. What matters is not the duration of your life, but the donation of it. Amen. Yeah. I mean, how long we're here is what we accomplish for him, right? Right. <clears throat> Not how long you live, but how, how you live. Imagine. I love that song. I can only imagine. Uh, but imagine. Just imagine. Uh, what did it feel like one day to have God say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Right? Come on. Is that what we're looking for? That's what I'm looking for. If you ain't looking for it today, I mean, you better reevaluate your priorities. Because mm -hmm. look, I talked to this guy the other day. He said, priorities. <laughs> it's God. Most people put family. That's right. He said, humanity. I was like, that's helping others. Mm -hmm. Humanity. And then your family. And then your finances. That's what I told him about the other day. It all fall into place. You put God first and then start helping people. Right. Oh man, He's going to bless you abundantly. That's right. You know, right? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. I got about seven more pages. No, it's not. <laughs> That's what John said. That's not how I'm telling you. He goes, just remember, John 
chapter 12, I said, 49, 50. He goes, how many notes you got? <laughs> I said, well. <laughs> but it's, it seems more confirmation. You know what I mean? He said, it, it, I was like, okay. You know what I mean? But anyway. All right, here we go. It's all about the renewing of your mind, like Paul said. Service starts in your mind. To be a servant requires mentorship. A change in your attitude. <laughs> Servants focus on others, not on themselves. So see, Tyler? Help another Joe out. Oh, broke back Joe. You know, old Joe's operator. Ain't no, no offense, Philip. Philip's operator, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that's what you're supposed to be doing, Tyler. And you, you're a shining example, brother. Amen. Like Kyle, right here. Like Brian. I see all kinds of examples. I don't know y'all very well. But, you know, hey, look what you got to realize is really. when you come to church, it's like being at a football game. You're huddling up to go back out in the world. That's right. And if you ain't going back out there the rest of the week talking about God to somebody, you're not doing what he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the way John does. He takes, it's like he said, he got a football in church one week. He <laughs> throws it across the room. He's like, all right, get the ball. What are you going to do with it? Because mm -hmm. the devil's coming. He's mm -hmm. coming. Mm -hmm. You ready for it? You know, a lot of back is coming. You know, you're going to make it to the end zone with it. You're going to drop the ball. You know? I'm running with it. Mm -hmm. I got Lance. I got some linebackers. Running back, something. <laughs> right? And running back block for the tight end or something. I don't know a lot about football. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm more like fishing. Just <laughs> 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 You know, in the parable of uh, we're talking about sowing the seeds, it was the same sower sowed the seeds. He sowed them on all the ground. You know what I mean? Rocky ground by the wayside, the fertile ground. You gotta keep sowing them seeds. <coughs> and you always gotta remember this. Isaiah 55 11 says, you know, God's word that says it out will never return void. Right? You know, I do this uh I get on Facebook every morning, I read the devotion. Well, Tracy, one of our friends from Nashville, she does a prayer call every week, uh, Monday through Friday. Well, anyway, she calls me up. She's like, I used to say, well, I hope y'all got something out of that. And she said, don't do that. Don't do that. She said, you're, you're sowing uh, doubt <coughs> in somebody's mind saying, I hope. She said, just declare the word. Speak the word only. You know what I mean? Yeah. And dude, when you start doing that, you'll see things change in your life. You know what I mean? I'm going to tell you, there's folks in this room who say, they came just to see me stand up here and say something about God. You know what I mean? They're like, did you? You know? I mean, if y'all know me a few years ago, y'all probably seen me on the news. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And uh, it's like it says in Romans, God will use it all for his glory. You know what I mean? Right? Amen. Amen. I like the story about Joseph. I know about Joseph. Anybody know about Joseph? Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, Jacob's daddy loved him so much he gave him his coat. Which Jacob and, I mean, Joseph and, what was his little brother's name? Ben. 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 Yeah. They was, they was Rachel's kids. Wasn't it, wasn't it Rachel? Mm -hmm. It was the one, his second wife, that his uncle had <laughs> tricked him. Mm -hmm. See, that was a deal. Oh, <laughs> Jacob, he was, he, was, he was a deceiver. He had tricked his brother, and he, and he wound up running off to the foreign land over here. I think it came with Yeah. Anyway, and he wound up tricking him, and he got, I can't remember her name, the oldest sister, because he worked for seven years. Mm -hmm. To marry 
for Rachel, right? right. He's like, oh, no, you got to take the older one first. She got to be married. Then he wound up working another seven years. Mm -hmm. right? But anyway, Joseph and Benjamin was the ones out of his second wife. And the other boys, they really didn't like old Joseph. Mm. You know? And uh, they went up and thought him in the pit. In the hole. Come back and told him, Daddy, he said, some wild animals eat him. Then the oldest one, I don't know if it was Reuben. Might have been. They wanted to kill him. Some of them wanted to kill him. The other one's like, no, I don't kill him. He wound up selling him into slavery. And they took mm -hmm. him back to Egypt. He wound up in Potiphar's house. Mm -hmm. Potiphar was... Uh, like the general over the Roman army, more or less. And uh, he took care of Potiphar's house like a governor, pretty much. Well, Potiphar's wife, well, Joseph was easy on the eyes. Potiphar's wife wanted to play with Joseph. And then he wouldn't do it. He said, it's against, you know, what God's got to say, you know. And uh, she went up telling Potiphar that he, he was trying to, to get with her. Well, they thought he was in prison. Then uh, <coughs> uh, there was a baker and cupbearer. I can't think of the other one. Cupbearer. The cupbearer. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, honey. That's my queen right there. <laughs> but uh, they had these dreams, and they come to Joseph, and he he interpreted them for them, and uh, they come out just like they said. <coughs> well, one of them got their head cut off, and the other one. Went back to his job, and uh, I can't think of who the king was at the time. But anyway, he had he'd been having dreams, and Joseph wound up interpreting them. Long story short, he wound up being second in command under Pharaoh. Okay, but Joseph didn't endure the pit and Potiphar's house in prison. Because he knew how everything was going to turn out. <coughs> he did it by faith because he trusted in God. Just like in Daniel. Like Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They told Nebuchadnezzar and said, We will not bow down to your golden image. Our God is enough. That's right. He's enough. You know? And just like Daniel. Daniel's like, he prayed three times. He's like, that's after Peter died, and then this is the other guy, I can't remember his name, I'm not real good with names, it's like, I'm like some of y'all's face right now, yeah. and I know you, but I can't remember your name. But, he laid down and slept with him, you know, because there was 120 providences that king broke up, broke the nation up into, and them guys really didn't like how Daniel was running it, and they, they went to him and had him uh, bring up a law <laughs> saying, hey, look, Daniel's over praying to his God, and he's like, Oh, and he really thought a lot of Daniel, this king here did, you know what I mean? He felt bad about it. He tried to get him out of it. And he was like, it's all, right. it's all good. God's got this, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And he went there and laid down and slept with the lions because he had faith in his God. You got faith in your God today? Mm -hmm. Good deal. You got to believe it. Don't you, Brian? Set the hook, baby. Huh? Come I mean, on. really believe it. Put it in your... Write it down. You know? But anyway, mm -hmm. the other guys that got in trouble in the pit, or in there with the lions, they got thrown in there and I the lions ate them up. You know? Because they didn't believe in God. But, man. I can't wait for you to read that. Uh, okay. I'm almost done. Maybe. <laughs> hmm. this is what it means to lose your life forgetting yourself in service to others <laughs> when, we, when we stop focusing on our own needs we become aware of the needs of others around us Paul said in Philippians 2 7 Jesus emptied himself by taking on the form of a servant. When was the last time you emptied yourself <coughs> for someone else's benefit? For Tyler, it was this last week. Oh, <laughs> uh, you can't be a servant when you are full of yourself. 
It's only when we forget ourselves that we do the things that deserve to be remembered. Real servants don't try to use God for their purposes. They let God use them for his purposes. Thinking like a servant is different because it challenges the basic problem of my life. I am by nature selfish. I think most about me. That's why humility is a daily struggle. A lesson I must relearn over and over. The opportunity to be a servant comforts me. Dozens of times a day. In which I'm given the choice to decide between meeting my needs or the needs of others. Self-denial <coughs> is the core of servanthood. And look here, I'm going to flip to Matthew. Uh, Matthew chapter 9. If you want to flip, I ain't got to. But this, is, this is what I was getting at right here. The whole thing I was talking. Matthew chapter 9 and uh, verse 35. Yes? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Jesus traveled through all the towns and villages of that area, teaching in the synagogues, and announcing the good news about the kingdom. And he healed every kind of disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He said to his disciples, this is what I was getting at right here. The harvest is great, but the workers are few. So pray to the Lord who is in charge of the harvest, ask him to send more workers into the fields. He's asking you today to go out in the fields. You gonna go? Yes. Huh? I got one more verse. <laughs> Hebrews. Hebrews. And this is confirmation right here too. The girl said this other night too. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, chapter, I'm gonna read a little bit of uh, 11 and then a little bit of 12. Uh, <coughs> Y'all know what chapter 11 is about, right? It's the witnesses of, of all the old, like Moses and Abraham and Sarah and Noah. It's the witnesses of faith, the cloud of witness. You know, okay, the last part of it. I don't know what time I finish reading. I'm just going to read it. It's all good. Start at verse 32. It says, how much more do you need to say? How much more do I need to say? I would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon, Barak, Samson, I can't even say that guy's name, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. By faith, these people overthrew kingdoms, ruled with justice, and received what God had promised them. They shut the mouths of lions, quenched the flames of fire, and escaped death by the edge of the sword. Their weakness was turned into strength. Everything you've been through, that's, your weakness. that's what he wants to turn into strength, y'all. Right. They became strong in battle and put on, put whole armies to flight. Anyone to skip a few? That way I don't take up too much of your time. Verse 39 right there says, all these people earned a good reputation because of their faith. Yet none of them received all that God had promised. For God had something better in mind for us so that they would not reach perfection without us. And check this out. The first three verses right here. And I'm going to be done. You want to get a cup of coffee? Uh, verse one. Therefore, since... We are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witness to the life of faith. Let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus. It's like I talked about that, that little boy when he looked up. 
He didn't take his eyes off Jesus. He just took his hand. Hmm. Because of the joy of waiting. <coughs> oh, I skipped the part right there. The champion who initiates and perfects our faith because of the joy of awaiting him. He endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people. Then you won't become weary and give up. So, I guess that's what, what I'm trying to say is. <clears throat> Hope I get this right, Brian. He blessed me to be a fisher of men. I get a devil every now and then. And when I do, I make a brother, a sister, and a brand new friend. How blessed I am. <laughs> To be a fisher of men. Amen. Uh, if there's anybody in this room that don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I don't know how y'all do it, but in our church, we just ask you to come right around up here and we'll pray for you. And I always heard, you know, a message without an invitation is just talk. So uh, it, ain't, it ain't a walk of shame. It's a, a walk of glory. I mean, you're coming into the kingdom. Right. <laughs> you know, that's our first goal in life is to become kingdom citizens, as John said. You know, we're all Americans, but we need to become kingdom Americans. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking about, we put God first, humanity, and then our family. <laughs> you know, you got to put the kingdom first. So is there anybody in here looking Talk to Jesus on that glory today. And just walk down there today to the part of the gates and be on them streets of gold. You know, I think it's Revelations 21. It talks about what it's going to look like. You know? Human mind can't comprehend it, right? Well, <coughs> if nobody wants to come up here and accept the Lord in their life, I got a, I got a song I want us to sing all together. It's in a hymn book. Victory in Jesus. Can we do that?